Hi folks, Swiss Bohemian here. Uh, today's video is a little bit different. Uh, usually I talk in the camera, but this time I thought it's more interesting when I do this setup to show you some of my very old manga I got. Now, for many years I had this box here in my parents' home. And this box contains manga in the old comic book format in English and also a little bit other things. I would say half of them I bought back in the 90s when I was a teenager and other things I'm really confused that I have them because it's not my style. I guess I got them for, for free for, from some friends or I just picked them up really really cheap because I really can't remember I know I got some new subscribers, uh, new subscribers also from Spain and uh, all I can say is uh, yo no hablo el español, lo he aprendido en la escuela, uh, pero lo, he, lo yo he lo, lo olvidado and that's all, so I can't really speak uh, Spanish anymore but I still understand a little bit. So um, why I'm saying this, well because I have only two two manga in Spanish. So the first one would be an issue of Dragon Ball. Quite interesting, but it came out uh, from Planeta Agostini comics. Um, I think I got that one as a small present from someone many, many, many years ago. Yeah, so that's the first one I have in Spanish. And the other one is a manga called Fortune Quest. And this is a this is a kind of a fantasy manga. And I know there exists an anime of it, uh, 90, uh, one from the 1990s. I also can't remember anymore when I got this one, but that was also many years ago. Let's continue. Um, first with manga which I really bought myself and these are this is a manga which it was one of my very first manga actually it's Yoji Manabe's Caravan Kid now Caravan Kid I remember I uh, discovered in the in 1992 I was 16 at that time and I really loved this art style I knew another manga by that artist and that was Outlanders and I remember I discovered this comic in a Swiss uh, comic store and with my pocket money I started to collect Caravan Kid. So for all of you who don't know what this actually is, I mean by the, by the size and so on, uh, manga was published in the US for many years in this format, it usually contained 40 pages and it came out monthly. I think that was until uh, Tokyo Pop made it like uh, the usual uh, manga format. Hmm? Anyway, so I bought these uh, starting from 1992 and they were quite expensive in, um, in back then. Well, in the US they were around um, $2.50. $2.50 and in Switzerland, I I got them for like double price, so at least uh, six dollars, six six francs twenty back then. And I really liked, I loved actually this manga a lot back then. So this was like this uh, kind of fantasy manga, quite inspired by Star Wars and also other science fiction comics and movies, you can see like this organic style of the backgrounds and drops. I love that. And I was bad in English back then, in junior high. But when I started to read manga in English, especially Karen Kid, my grades went from bad to actually quite good in English. <laughs> it's really fun. So there's Karen Kid, I continue to buy Karen Kid. Until I think two years later, so 93, 94, I stopped buying it. Don't know why, but yeah. Um, there's also a holiday special. There's even a Valentine's special. It's 
fun, fun times. These are all from this comics. It's actually Maison Ikoku. And Maison Ikoku, well, uh, that's a famous rom rom romantic comedy from the 1980s. I watched a little bit of the anime on French television in the late 80s, but I didn't really understand the story, so I wasn't such a big fan of it. But later I discovered the manga, and I must say the manga really hooked me. It was really good. It was really good. By the way, I also really like the... Um, the covers, um, that was a good thing about uh, this format of, of manga back then. Yes, it was expensive, yes, it only contained 40 pages, so two chapters at a time, but the covers were always in color and big, so that was good actually. A lot of Maison et Coco, but it's not complete. And I'm, I'm not sure if these manga today are worth something or if they are like really a collector's item. But I don't really care. I mean, for me this is all nostalgia. As you can tell, some are some are still packed, others aren't. Uh, one of the reasons is uh, I had to really clean this box. It was really dirty. Uh, my my fingers are still a bit dirty. And uh, for some, I got them in the, in, in uh, Switzerland without bags and I and. I never really bothered to buy these kind of plastic bags. I don't really like to bag my things, to be honest. But anyway, so yeah, a lot of Maison Ikoku in English. And then I also have a little bit of Urusei Atsura. I love the anime on French television. I was a big fan. And I also got one of this comic's thick... Uh, I have two of uh, the original uh, thick volumes of this. And I also discovered these here, so these issues, I like that. As I can tell the price here is 6, six it's, it's uh, 6 francs 10, um, that was around yeah, 6 dollars back then. Yeah, then I have Mermaid Forest, also from Rumiko Takahashi, and then Ranma. And also Ranma first I discovered as an anime on French television and then I, I got the first uh, volume from this, the thick one, uh, the red one. And uh, because there were not further volumes in Switzerland I started to buy these. Again, it's, it's the whole thing which I like, the, I mean... It's like the, the covers, it's really nice, really nice. Part 2, this part 3, part 2, okay, I have to be careful. Part 3, part 3, and so on, that's part still part 3, part 3. Four, three, and um, a lot of, lot of Ranma. Some other manga, still by the publishing company Viz, uh, Riot. I don't remember anything about it anymore, but I can tell it that is a really 1990s art style. Quite also influenced by, I don't know, by uh, anime, but back at that time, I guess. These really long, lan lanky character designs. I'm not really a fan of it anymore. I didn't didn't mind back then, but today that wouldn't be the kind of manga I buy. But anyway, I have it right. Then this I'm really surprised that I got the next ones. This one, Justy. I first thought that was like uh, something from Haruhiko Mikimoto, the artist of um, <clears throat> Macross, but it's not. It's from an artist called Tsugo Okazaki. It's a really classical style, I like that. What I'm even more surprised it actually is it's probably the oldest ma uh, comic style manga I have in my collection. It's from 1989 and in 1989 I didn't buy manga. I'm old but not that old, so I wonder why I got this one. Anyway, then Battle Angel Lalita. I think that was my very first um, exposure to my, uh, Battle Angel, Alita, Gun. Yeah. P. 
Pixie Junket. I don't remember any more anything about that anymore. Silent Mobius, yeah. And Neon Genesis Evangelion Special Collector's Edition. That's now special because actually, yep, surprise, this is the last, not the first page of this comic. So you had to start here. And back then, I think this came out in 1996, if I'm not mistaken. Back then, it was quite unusual. So the next ones are also a bit from Dark Horse. I forgot to say that Caravan Kid was published by Dark Horse in the States. Gunsmith Cats. Yeah, that's a classic. I have all the volumes in Japanese. I have uh, one volume, I think, in English, a thicker one. I also have the anime um, on VHS. Yes, one VHS and also DVD, but not the Blu-ray yet. Yeah. Then uh, version. By Hisashi Sakaguchi. Doesn't ring, ring a bell to me, but that definitely looks like hard science fiction, which is a good thing. The following ones are all from a company called Antarctic Press, which was quite active and it still is. Now. <laughs> Ninja High School by Ben Dunn, and that's a special is issue. It's about sexually transmitted diseases, what people should know. <laughs> I have no idea when I got this, but I can definitely tell you, yeah, I, I was the one who got this one <laughs> because I have strange tastes. Now this one, I'm pretty sure I didn't buy with my money. I got it. I just had a peek uh, inside before shooting this video and I can tell you, no, that's really not my style. But I think I got them for free from someone or, I, or someone wanted to throw them away. So I just, uh, I picked them up. Uh, this is not an original manga. It's by an artist called Dave, Dave Wilson. And yeah, I mean, Watch, I no disrespect to the artist, but that's really not my style. Yeah, I don't know what he did else, but you can tell that he's like imitating manga style. And it's really not uh, the best I've ever seen. So, Hitomi, one, two, three, and then was like uh, Hitomi 2. Now this I have absolutely no idea when and where I got this but I'm pretty sure I didn't pay money for it. And it's interesting now to see that this is like quite a furry manga. Shanda the Panda, mature readers only. Back then I, I didn't get really the references but now I get it. Of course Silence of the Lamb, Silence of the Loves. Shanna the Panda, well, of course, that's like uh, Aladdin. Sleepless in Cedar Rapids, well, of course, Sleepless, Sleepless in Seattle. Sex, Lies and Dinner Dates, of course, that would be like um, Sex, Lies and Videotapes. Ixer, I think it was an Ixa one, Ixer one. Uh, this is uh, also 1980s OAV. Still quite popular among uh, older fans. And I think this is, yeah, that's definitely uh, drawn by a Japanese artist. Yeah, it's written here, Moriki Yasuhiro. So I one, volume one, two, three, four, and so on. And the final issue, okay. I think there are character signs of the art. That's nice. Drawing board and character designs for the anime. So this is about the, the anime. Sane Steel Armadillo Ryukihe. I have no idea what this is about, but you can tell by the way that the styles are all a little bit similar, but also the content seems to be similar. So it's a lot of science fiction, but also like swords fantasy style more for mature readers it's written here for mature readers um yeah that, 
That was a kind of manga which was quite popular in the US back then. It contained nudity, it contained like violence and it's different from today. Today is more... Hmm, now today you have more genres, it's broader, you have more comedy, you have more like anime inspired things, you have like uh, many things, you have a lot more for female readers, back then for female readers I think you had nothing. Hurricane Girls, can't remember this one, I also think I got those for free or something. Fantastic Panic, Gun Beers. Yeah, Mask Warrior, Masayuki Fujihara's Mask Warrior. I don't know this one. Now to the rather bizarre stuff from uh, different publishing companies. First, uh, Iron Cat, Flag Fighters, story and art by Masaomi Kanzaki. Okay, that's video games, video game inspired fighting stuff. Iron Cat Part 2 Now this one, this one is great This one I definitely bought myself and I remember when it was, it was around 20 years ago This is Punk Punk by Tachi Haruko This is a little girl's manga and it's hilarious, really fun Interestingly, this is in English and in Japanese, you turn around and it's in Japanese. So here, there's Japanese, and here, it's English. It's the story about the little girl and her like fat, gross rabbit, and it's just hilarious, really great. Like, uh, <laughs> like she, this boy is really cute, and she falls in love, and then suddenly the art style changes, like typical. Shoujo nice looking and then let's this dumb bunny potting in This is really funny and I loved it. I Loved it so much that uh, when I was in Japan for the first time I Got like some volumes of this one in Japanese hot tales um, uh, This is a uh, Toshiki Yui um, He's also a hentai artist, so I will not open it because I want this video to be, um, yeah, not to be like censored on YouTube. And um, Project Eiko, this is uh, not a manga, but it's drawn by an American artist. I think it's been done, not quite sure. And this was unusual back then that some, some uh, publishers published comics based on existing anime. It was a way to promote also the anime. That's an example, Burn Up. So the cover, is definitely from the anime and here is like even the uh, the ad for the anime just 29.95 by a division but the content is uh, the content is uh, not really beautiful to look at actually let's be honest it's it's, it's horrible Alice in the Lost World manga file this one too, I got those for free. Sky Blue, volume one, two, three. And then the really bizarre stuff. This one, I just had a look before shooting this video, but I must say this is like, uh, the art is actually quite pretty. It's absolutely, absolutely not my style, but it has a really nice coloring. Yeah, that is solid. Ninja High School. But not drawn by Ben Dunn, it's drawn by another artist. Okay. Duty Bunny! Okay, that's like we are really very, very deep in, in furry, furry uh, territory here. My god. <laughs> Warrior Nun. Yeah, this is this is this is all stuff I'm not interested in. This may be just a little bit, but no, it's really not my stuff. Now the last thing I want to show you are some really interesting ads by this like kind of magazines with uh, us useful information it's called Visin this is like a promotion for Vist the publisher company back then 
it's not only like uh, information and like an ad for their own manga they publish in English, it, they used to publish, but it also has a lot of useful information and also some, um, some interviews sometimes. For example here, this is, uh, I think his name, Gerard, Gerard, jo I'm sorry I butcher your name, Gerard Jones. Um, he was a translator for many manga of, of uh, Viz, uh, from Viz company. So, for example, he uh, used to translate Maison Ikoku, I think, but also Uruzi Atsura. So, it's really great to have like uh, these kind of information. And this is the very first one. And I checked it, it came out, I think, in 1990. So, it's really old. It's 1990. It's volume one, number three. Oh, that is Naoki Urasawa, huh? a Pineapple Army, my, the graphic novel. Uh, this is a manga, which I remember back then I, I wasn't really interested in the pictures because it, it was not like what I expected manga to look like. I was like really used to like more the cutie style, which I was used from anime. And uh, today I must say I really like this art style a lot. As an adult it really speaks to me. It's by Ryoichi Ikegami. I should really buy this one. So it, I think it's called My the Psychic Girl. Yeah. It's really great to to have these uh, ones. I didn't throw them away. Oh. I think we are now in the year 1994, 93, and then in 1994 suddenly it switched to color and it was only like one big page but this is really nice because it's actually like a small poster. So you still had a little bit of information in the back. Gorgeous, absolutely gorgeous. I also have like these kind of like manga magazines. Um, I think this came out in uh, the early, no, I think the mid 90s. 1995. So this contains a little bit of the short stories of Rumiko Takahashi. Hino Hikeki. I think they're all from the publisher Shogakuka. That was it for today. I hope you liked today's video. It was a little bit special. I did it differently from usual. I have a question for you. Did you also used to collect manga in this uh, comic book style format? If you did, what kind of manga did you collect? And in general, what do you think of these kind of manga back then and also uh, how they were like published in the US? Let me know in the comments down below and see you next time. Goodbye!